Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a quick look at a paper that makes the case that machine learning can be used to improve the performance of some very fundamental indexing data structures like B trees or hash tables or bitmaps. The crux of the idea is that one can view these indexes as models and the authors argue that you can then use machine learning to learn these models. They call these data structures learned indexes. Now, of course, these data structures are fundamental to databases and many, many other applications and have been studied extensively. B trees are a mainstay of databases and are a good choice for range requests when you want to retrieve everything that falls within a given range. Hash maps are often the best performing tool for single key lookups and bloom filters or bitmap indexes are used to check if a record exists in a data structure or not. But all of these data structures are general purpose. They don't know anything about the distribution of the data that they contain. And knowing that distribution can sometimes drastically improve both the size and the performance of these data structures. To take a somewhat contrived example, if you had a set of continuous integer keys, you wouldn't need a B tree to index over them because the key itself could be used as an offset. That means you could do lookups in order one time rather than order log n time. And in terms of size, you wouldn't need to store anything in your index at all. So you would have reduced the size of your structure down from order n to order one. The problem is that in real world use cases, you can't predict the patterns you're going to see in your data. And this is where machine learning is a particularly good fit because instead of engineering a new solution to every new pattern of data that you could possibly see, you can train a model that learns those patterns. And then you can use that model in your learned index. This diagram illustrates the basic idea, which is that you can think of a B tree as something that takes a key and then predicts its position in a sorted array. So you could take this entire B tree and replace it with a machine learned model. But you might say that this is not exactly the same thing because the B tree index will tell you exactly what the position of the key is, whereas the model might have some error associated with its prediction. But in this particular case, we're assuming that the underlying data is sorted. And so even if there's a small error, you can quickly find the exact element by doing a small local search around the predicted position. Once you look at it through this lens, you can replace a B tree with any kind of machine learned model. And the main trade off becomes between the complexity of this model and the accuracy of its predictions. And this is where the authors look towards where hardware trends are going and look at how machine learning accelerators like GPUs or tensor processing units can take this computation off the main CPU and do it much, much faster. The main problem still remains that the latency of transferring data and getting a result back from a GPU is still pretty high. But this is not going to be the case forever with closer integrations between CPUs and GPUs. Let's look at the basic mathematical idea behind building these models. We basically want to predict the position P of a given key, and we can reduce that to the problem of approximating the cumulative distribution function of the underlying data. So if we learn that function F, F of the key is an estimate of the likelihood of observing a key smaller than the one we're looking for. And if we multiply that by n, which is the total number of keys, we will get a prediction for the position at which we might find our key. The authors built a learning index framework to implement this idea. 
and it integrates with TensorFlow for complex models like neural networks, but it can handle simple models like linear regression on its own. Now, obviously, you don't want to invoke a bunch of Python code for every lookup, and this framework generates fast C++ code from the underlying model weights in order to do lookups. They ran some benchmarks on some real-world data sets, mostly logs of web accesses, where the request timestamp was the key they were looking at. Note that this is not a convenient data set for a machine learning algorithm to build a model out of because these requests are ultimately coming from humans and reflect things like the time of the day, whether it was a weekend or not, whether it was a holiday or not, and so on. This table summarizes the results and the authors have used a read-optimized B-tree as the baseline for comparing all the others. And as you can see, these learned indexes are actually performing quite well. They are between one and a half to three times faster at lookups, but almost two orders of magnitude smaller in size than B trees. We've been looking at B trees so far, but you can take the same idea and apply it to hash maps as well. And when it comes to bloom filters or bitmaps, where we want to determine if a given record exists at all, you can look at it from the machine learning lens as a classification problem, where given a key, we want to predict whether it is a key or a non-key. So that was a quick look at a paper where the authors have proposed this really cool and interesting new idea of looking at index data structures as models and then using machine learning models instead of generic data structures to power them. And their initial results were pretty promising. They got good speed ups as well as space savings compared to these traditional data structures. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.